Hello, everyone, and welcome to the I2B2 Transmark Foundation Community Meeting for January 2019, uh, our first community meeting uh, of the year. My name is Rudy Potenzone from the foundation. Uh, I'll be giving the, the presentation um, main part today. Uh, Diane Keo sends her uh, regards, but um, cannot make it. She spent the last two weeks in India and unfortunately came home with the flu and uh, is recovering. As usual, the record, this will be recorded and the recordings will be on the website within a day or two. The agenda that we have set up for today is a um, preview of 2019, let you know some of the things that we've been working on. A uh, quick note about the Harvard Symposium that's coming up in June. A uh, little bit reminder about our sponsorship program, uh, our platforms, some updates, quick updates there. A couple notes about the I2B2 Transmart um, release that's uh, coming, and then uh, move over to our working groups. And um, Jim Campbell is here to talk about the ontology working group today, and we'll do that uh, towards the end. So uh, let's get started. Um, we've been working already on uh, our plans for 2019. Uh, this year, uh, we're gonna, of course, continue our community meetings. These are the third Tuesday of every month. Uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, you just need to register once and you're registered for all of the sessions. Obviously you're here and you've done that already. Uh, we do record these and they're made available on the website. Uh, we're working on two annual meetings again this year. Uh, the first one at Harvard University. This will be, I think, our fourth year uh, at Harvard Medical School. Uh, to date, uh, July, uh, June, sorry, June 17th and 18th. Uh, and um, I'll say, I'll say a few more words about that in a minute. Uh, the European meeting will take place in the fall uh, and we're still working on venue and dates for that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, our training program, we've been working to, to pull this together. It's uh, close to being complete uh, and I'll show you the schedule in a minute. Um, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the scientific conferences that we'll be uh, attending. As far as the training program goes, this is uh, what we have laid out so far. Uh, it's been a little quick to get something going for January, so we decided to start in uh, February. Uh, Rancho Bioscience will present um, another in their, their series on uh, using Transmar in complex clinical data, use it with complex clinical data sets. That'll take place in February. Uh, March University of Kansas, um, Marin there will give us again a, 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 another version of her basics of I2B2. Um, and then as we roll through, uh, they'll be training on uh, ontologies in I2B2. Uh, the Hive will be presenting on you know, using Glowing Bear and doing visual analytics uh, with Fractalis, uh, et cetera, as you go through there. There are a couple of open uh, sessions still there. Uh, if you have interest in particular topics, please let me know um, or let someone from the, uh, the training uh, working group know. But um, we're excited to get started again in February. We've trained over 500 people over the last couple of years uh, in these various topics. And uh, we're hopeful that we'll, uh, we'll continue this year. Uh, these are the meetings that we're, um, we're looking at for the year. We'll, uh, we may, may attend directly or someone will be attending and try to keep, uh, keep you up to date on, on different things that happen. Uh, these are places that uh, often uh, Transmar and I2B2 are uh, topics uh, or used in some of the presentations and. Uh, in particular, next week, there's the Health Research Informatics session in Utrecht. Uh, actually, actually, I guess it's later this week, and um, uh, et cetera, as we go through, um, highlighting in particular the AMIA conferences that um, we often will attend. So that's um, so a quick list of that. Uh, and we'll let you know as we decide if we're going to have a bigger present, that bigger um, participation. If you're attending, and especially if you're presenting, at one of these sessions, we'd love to hear about that, and I will. We will advertise it uh, on our website and throughout our uh, social media. Talking about um, the Harvard Symposium, uh, we've got this set up this year for June seventeenth uh, and eighteenth. Uh, a little bit of a change of venue. We're going to be uh, holding this at Simmons College. I guess it's now Simmons University. Uh, on the, the Harvard Medical School campus. Um, and uh, the first day we'll have uh, presentations. Uh, the focus this year, we'll have one or two keynotes, um, but we're really looking for 
uh, use cases from all of you uh, in terms of uh, examples, um, data sets and things that you've worked on using I2B2 or Transmart. Uh, and so we're, we're really soliciting um, suggestions uh, on the website. You can see, um, you can do a proposals for giving a presentation uh, or a poster session. And uh, we'll, we'll get those um, all pulled together over the next couple of weeks. Uh, more details on the actual agenda will, will be coming. We're also working on the logistics of the meeting. Uh, day two, we will have uh, breakout sessions as we did last year. Uh, and uh, in particular, the, uh, the working groups will have sessions during that day, uh, as well as uh, other topics. Um, and uh, we're hopeful that we'll get a really exciting day um, put together again. Uh, again, your suggestions are welcome, and we're hoping to, uh, to really have uh, a lot more detail within the next couple of weeks so everybody can start making their plans for uh, attending the meeting. Uh, I want to remind everyone about our foundation sponsorship program. Uh, this is one of the primary sources of funding for the operations uh, of the foundation. Um, the benefits of contributing uh, are, uh, are listed here. And we're, we're still, uh, you know, we're pulling all the details of these together in some cases, but um, we're really looking that uh, we do appreciate the support from the sponsors uh, and we're trying to work together with them to, um, to make this uh, an even more uh, important and exciting program. Uh, these are the, the groups who have, were sponsoring in 2018 and we're hoping that uh, they will uh, sponsor again during the, this, this year. We'll be, uh, we'll be you know, in touch with you. Um, just uh, some quick updates on the uh, foundation platforms. Um, we uh, we continue to to evolve the, the various platforms. Uh, I2B2 uh, new version 1.7.11 uh, is coming. Uh, a number of um, enhancements there. This will also bring a new license uh, for the software. So we're moving I2B2 is moving to a, a more a uh, common uh, open source license, the Mozilla uh, MPL 2.0 license, uh, and this will all be in place uh, for version 1.7.11, uh, as well as a number of uh, bug fixes and, and a few enhancements. Uh, and these will all be rolling out uh, in the February timeframe, um, I think. Uh, Transmart, um, we have 16.3 is out uh, that's, that supports both um, Oracle and Postgres. Uh, we're working on 16.4. This is an, uh, an alignment version, which will get it completely in line with the I2B2 Transmart release, uh, with a uh, little bit largely a lot of the same um, capabilities, but um, bringing in uh, some of the integration tools to, to be able to work within the I2B2 Transmart um, platform. And again, this uh, the, 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 the time frame is, is in is for the spring. Uh, for 16.4 to actually be become available. Work continues on the with the, the enhancements and upgrades for 17.1. Uh, we've been working on some uh, data model changes and we're, uh, we'll have more to, to say about this in the, the coming weeks. And then finally, I2B2 Transmart. Uh, this is the work out of Paul VX Lab. Uh, we saw a, a wonderful preview of this in, in June last year and they've been working on it. Uh, the new version of the Quick Start, which represents the kind of the full uh, release set, uh, is now available, and uh, you're invited to, to download it and take a look at it. But um, also, there shortly we'll have the actual production release available uh, for us to all um, preview and take a look at. And I'll uh, I'll show you a couple things about that uh, in a minute. Um, but you know, we want to just um, Talk a little bit about you know the I2B2 Transmart platform environment. You know this is um, obviously what we all work within. You know it's it's an open source uh, platform. You know it allows the, a, a lot of a lot of tools for exploring clinical and translational and genomic data. And what we're working towards, and especially within the uh, the combined I2B2 Transmart platform, uh, is really a, a modular system that can allow you know not only uh, the core tools that come with it, but in, but an open development platform that allow plugins and interfaces to other systems uh, as they all come together. And this, you know, with the um, with the, a lot of the enhancements in this combined platform uh, that's been coming out of Paul's lab, um, a lot of this is, is going to be 
a lot of capabilities are going to be enabled as we move ahead with this. And so I thought I would take a couple of minutes to just show you some of uh, some screenshots uh, of the, the system as it uh, has been evolving. Um, the final version is uh, going to be called 18.1. It's been released um, in its uh, initial form in December, and we'll see the actual full production version uh, with all of the installation um, tools uh, in the coming weeks. If we take a look at the platform, um, you know, it, it looks a lot, it is, you know, within it, it does have a I2B2 and, and uses the core I2B2 uh, data model as its primary um, uh, storage uh, for the clinical information. Um, is that the interfaces are, are there, uses a lot of the transmart uh, uh, for the uh, um, statistics and, and some of the, the workflows that it that offers. Uh, again, it's very familiar. It's got the drag and drop um, uh, functionality for building up a query uh, to look at your, your cohort set. Uh, you can drag and drop from your, your navigate terms or your studies that are on the left-hand panel there. And as usual, you know, you build up a, a query in the, in the, the traditional way. And uh, underneath here, you're actually using uh, the code, you know, the actual I2B2 or the Transmart um, tools, you know, as appropriate as this builds up the, the various pieces. Um, there's also a new user interface that's been put together. Uh, so it's a simpler user interface, which you can um, uh, build up your query uh, in a more uh, Google-like fashion uh, and, and sequentially, you know, systematically build up a query set and um, uh, come up with, you know, your cohorts, which at that point you can then, you know, go back and continue to then do your traditional, you know, kinds of, you know, analysis of the, 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 the data set you have, uh, summary statistics or some simple, you know, analysis of, of this, this tool of the system uh, as you move ahead. And what's, um, what's interesting as you, you go through, you know, you'll see is that you also have the option uh, given the, the, um, the capabilities of the integration that the tool offers, the ability to move, for example, to Jupyter Hub if you want to do a much more rigorous analysis and complete a study. Uh, and um, you know, really provide some some very sophisticated tools and, and t uh, capabilities here. Um, we are uh, also using Hale from the Broad Institute for um, the um, uh, for uh, genome genomic information uh, and um, uh, variant uh, repository, and these can all be brought together with the clinical data, uh, so that you can really you know pull together some fairly sophisticated. Um, types of, um, of analyses. Uh, there, there are several uh, wonderful examples that uh, if you look at Paul's, uh, Paul VX Research Group, uh, some of the links that he has there, and these are being brought into the foundation site. We'll have a full um, presentation of this on the foundation site shortly. Um, you'll see the, um, you know, the full capabilities of the system and a, a lot of example sets uh, and using it. Um, what um, the other part of this that, um, uh, let's see, the, you know, as this uh, comes available uh, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be having a short uh, uh, a webinar series uh, where we'll be presenting various topics on the, the I2B2 Transmart uh, combined platform uh, so that you can start to learn about, you know, what are the capabilities, what are the, you know, both in terms of uh, uh, using the system as it's there, but also how to extend it and how to make use of some of these more advanced uh, capabilities. And uh, again, these will be coming available uh, shortly in the next couple of weeks. And so uh, also we'll, uh, we'll advertise the, um, the webinar series on the actual, you know, launch of uh, the full, the full tool. So that's what I want to say about that. Um, if we, uh, just moving on, uh, I'd like to talk uh, just quickly about the overall, the working groups. Uh, these have been set up. I, I know Diane has personally been um, working on, you know, getting these groups started and, and moving ahead. Uh, and uh, there's been a lot of activity in particular in the user interface group, Greg Bright, uh, Griffin Weber, uh, the ontologies group led by Jim Campbell, uh, the ETL group uh, by Mike Mendez. And then a new group that's really gotten started and is uh, pulling together is the use cases. Uh, we think that um, getting, you know, documentation and, and information about 
real life use cases uh, that where the platforms are really making a difference uh, is going to help everybody in the community. These the use cases are, are just wonderful examples of how others are using the system and uh, really a lot of lessons to be learned there. And so we're really hoping to get uh, some uh, significant number of use cases pulled together uh, for us to all share and, and learn from. Um, and uh, we'll hear more about that group uh, in the next uh, month or two, we hope. Uh, there are also, you may not know this, but there are two operational working groups that have been going for a while, one on events and one on training. Uh, the events team meets once a month. We talk about the um, you know upcoming events, which uh, you know where should we be? What uh, where where is the where are the foundation platforms being presented, uh, and what type of information you know should we be sharing between us? And then where you know should we be considering uh, attending in a little more you know a little more presence at the, any of the future events? Also, of course, you know becoming very involved in helping pull together the Harvard meeting in June and then the, the fall meeting in Europe. So the events team uh, is available. And if you're interested, let us know. There's a working group sign up sheet uh, on that web page. Similarly, the training team, we tend to just work um, for a month or so at the beginning of the year to pull together the year's training program. Uh, and we've been trying to, to do all that in this last uh, week or two to finalize the training for the, for the year. And you saw that. but. Um, Again, we uh, encourage you to, uh, to to join one of these working groups and uh, get involved with these uh, as we go. So that's um, those are the topics I wanted to cover. I think what we'll do now is we'll switch to Jim Campbell, who's going to talk about, uh, give us a, a brief report on the ontology working group and what they've been doing. Uh, and then we'll get back together for uh, questions and uh, open discussion. Thank you, Rudy. Can you hear me? Yes. Let me get your screen up here. There we go. Okay. Jim, go ahead. Uh, how do I control the slides? I, I'll do it. Just let me know and I'll, I'll move them. Um, okay. Um, uh, good morning. My name is Jim Campbell. I'm an internist and informatics uh, uh, data cruncher at the University of Nebraska, um, and I've been chairing the um, ontology work group. We've been meeting now for a year. Next slide. Um, I want to acknowledge that we've had a uh, great bunch of people who have been part have been working on this, um, and um, reflect on uh, the fact that without their involvement, uh, you know we wouldn't have accomplished anything in the past 12 months. Next slide. So in brief, um, the ontology work group thought that it was important that we make um, ontologies, terminologies easier to use in the I2B2 Transmart uh, platform. Um, we recognize the fact that um, standard terminologies have a special place of importance, and we place these at the top of our priority list in terms of uh, in terms of development. Um, and uh, that we wanted to create a, a repository um, with both educational material and um, ontology material itself ready for load into the I2B2 Transmart Foundation uh, platform. Next slide. Um, we uh, sort of uh, fished around initially for how we were going to work on this um, and um, eventually came to focus on um, developing a wiki um, that would uh, support several educational and resource needs. Um, and uh, right now we've got a work plan that <clears throat> will basically um, develop um, platforms for ontology basics um, to acquaint the new user with the use of, I of ontologies in uh, I2B2. Um, Diane is convening a group on ontology use cases and I see from Rudy's presentation that that has probably spun off 
uh, to a separate activity uh, based on what he was saying. Right. Um, Ontologies for Federated Networks um, is being chaired by Robert Bradford, um, and I have been organizing uh, the Ontology Tools activity that will uh, basically post software and other resources uh, for implementation of ontologies. Um, it's a little bit blurred on this slide, but um, you should be able to get this on the website afterwards, and the link to um, our uh, wiki page is up there at the top of the slide. Uh, next slide, please. So Nitin Parikh has been, uh, uh, from UC Davis, has been uh, doing a great job in terms of leading the basics uh, group. Um, they've been meeting regularly for the past several months now um, and are about ready to uh, post uh, revised um, page content for um, a review and critique uh, prior, to, uh, prior to finalizing um, that for the Ontology Basics page. Next slide. Um, so what this reads is tooling wiki work plan. Um, this is the um, tooling group. <clears throat> and um, Laurie Phillips and the others from Harvard initially posted um, the uh, NCBO tools that they had um, made available over the past several years. Um, and uh, that's um, accessible from our tooling work page. Um, we have been working on a uh, draft of best practice guidelines for what it means to construct um, an ontology for use in I2B2. Um, and I would invite um, additional comment and thoughts about that. Uh, the link is there for that best practice guideline document. Um, we are about to roll out uh, tooling for um, two new builds. Um, one is um, current medications distributed from the National Library of Medicine to include Rx norm and NDC codes. Um, we will be publishing the uh, software used to uh, interact with the Rx class API in order to um, download uh, the current data, um, as well as um, ontologies um, in CSV files that are ready for installation into I2B2. <clears throat> One of our programmers has also uh, put together software to um, extract ICD-10-CM. We have the October 2018 version um, that is, um, uh, has been published um, uh, on our Snowshrine network. Um, and uh, the tooling, the software for that, along with uh, the new release for ICD-10-CM, uh, will also be going up here uh, within the month. Next slide. So I want to uh, mention the fact that we have several networks that are publishing their um, um, ontologies, um, and uh, both Arch and ACT. Um, have uh, Act just came out with uh, version two, and Michelle Morris at the University of Pittsburgh tells me that um, you know they have done quite a bit of work in terms of expanding content in Act. Um, both Arch and Act, and um, also our publication at Nebraska of Snow Shrine, um, are available on the web and can be downloaded uh, today for any parties that have interest in this. Again, Rudy, I'm assuming these slides will be up um, after the meeting so that anybody yes. can access this, these URLs, right? Yes, these will all be available. Great. Um, so at this point in time, these are all resources available on the web for your I2B2 Transmart uh, platform. Next slide. I do want to mention that in um, our discussions um, on the uh, ontology work group, you know, 
most of it has focused around the issue of the I2B2 transform uh, uh, platform. And I have to express some confusion, speaking as an I2B2 user, um, about how um, the interaction occurs with the Transmart software. Um, we're looking for use cases um, and a specification of needs from the Transmart community in terms of what they need um, in term for ontology support. And um, I would urge those members of the uh, community who um, historically have worked with Transmart um, to join our group um, because I'm really interested in seeing that your thoughts, concerns, and needs um, are reflected in uh, what we're developing. And I think that's as much as I had to say. Rudy, can we open it for questions? Absolutely. We can certainly do that. I'm just a comment. I mean, you do have several Transmart folks on your working group, um, but I think it's a good idea. We should encourage others to, to join. Um, and, and one other note is that um, these are the, all the working groups are still open and anyone who wants to join is welcome to uh, to participate. So anyone have a question? There are three ways you can ask a question. You can raise your hand uh, and I will open your mic. You can type a question into the question window or type it into the chat window. Um, Gil, would you like to add, you had a, a, a couple of questions and, and comments. Would you like to say a word? I want to unmute you, Gil. Right, thanks. Go ahead. Thanks, thanks, Rudy, for the whole session. And um, Jim, this is a terrific report. You've accomplished a lot over the past year, and you have a robust group of 23 people. And I just heard that you're accepting additional if people want to volunteer or bring their questions to you. I just want to make sure to find out how we can get the uh, URLs, since I couldn't copy and paste someplace. Sounds like you'll have them up on the website soon. And, yes. Uh, we'll be able to do that. Do you want people to contact you, Jim, or what's the process and, and how do we um, actually get people to join up? Uh, feel free to send me a message. Um, email, I am Campbell, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L, -L, at unmc.edu. Um, I apologize for not putting that on the slide, but we'll add it before, uh, before that's posted. And otherwise, um, you can go to the uh, website um, and I don't know if there's communication utilities there. Is there, uh, Rudy? No, actually, I guess there isn't, but there, there are a lot of links. Um, so uh, under About Us, there's a working group page and the, um, the groups that have pages are linked here. So the Ontology Wiki uh, is, uh, is reachable here. And you can see the information that's um, that's out here. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned getting a direct connection between the uh, Transmart or I2B2 Transmart case studies that are being yep. uh, gathered, Deb and others, with your ontologies group. That would be a natural. Understood. Thank you for that. Hey, thanks, Gil. I also hope others listening on the call may have uh, potential good use cases that they'd be willing to submit and share. Okay, thanks, Gil. Any other questions anyone have or comments about uh, not only Jim's, but anything that we talked about today? Uh, Gil had asked um, a, a question in the uh, the chat window about the the timing, uh, in particular of the uh, the use case uh, working group, and this is this group is just really formed. Uh, I'm not even sure we have a, a leader yet, um, but um, we're hoping that they're going to start meeting, uh, if not later this month, early in February, uh, and try to get us to a uh, you know a timeline um, that's going to work uh, and, and really get active. 
uh, we think that the you know as, as I said too the these these um, case studies are just so important to help everyone and it will be a focus at the uh, June Harvard Symposium to try to get some presentations on uh, specific projects you know just to help us all see what people are you know, how people are using it the the, the different parts of the system uh, and um, you know get some ideas for you know what how to to use it maybe more effectively in your own lab. So any other questions, comments um, from anyone? I don't see anything. Okay, well, we will get this all posted uh, within a day or two. And uh, thanks again, Jim, for a really excellent presentation. You guys are doing a great job and we're excited to see, you know, how, uh, you know, getting uh, all the results of this um, built back into the system. Hey, Rudy, I'm going to send you. you oh, go ahead. I'm going to send yeah. you an updated set of slides with. Uh, Perfect. Yep. With uh, my email on it as well. Okay. okay. That's great. We'll bring it all together. Okay. Thanks, everyone. We will uh, see you again next month.